Hey guys, this is an examples video of one-sided limits with absolute value only. So I'm gonna be breaking down these four examples. If you're looking for a longer explanation with like more detail of how one-sided limits work, I have a lesson video on that that I highly recommend you check out. Otherwise, these are the four examples I'm gonna go through. You can find the one that you're looking for, or you could also pause the video here and quiz yourself on these four, and then you've got all the solutions coming up. Okay, so starting with the first one, so kind of the key to working with absolute value problems and, and one-sided limits is really understanding what's going on with the absolute value function in terms of like how it's kind of sloped. So if I think about just the absolute value of x minus two, so here is what that function looks like, and here's the important thing that you have to understand about this. So here at two, this is where kind of this, this function like changes its behavior. So on this side, is this a positive slope or is it a negative slope? This side is negatively sloped versus this side. This side is positively sloped. So this matters because it's going to dictate basically how you can rearrange this problem because the problem is that as this stands, you cannot just cancel stuff out. You have to actually rewrite the absolute value in, in a um, in a way that so that you could actually cancel. So you're not allowed to, to cancel at this point. So. If I think about this then, if I'm approaching two from the right, am I on the negatively sloped side or the positively sloped side? Well, in this case, I would be on the positively sloped side. So just to kind of be really explicit as to what that means. So I can rewrite this absolute value as just x minus two. So you can kind of imagine like that there's this invisible positive sign right here kind of indicating that we are on the positively sloped side. So it, it looks like I've done nothing except drop the absolute value, but the, there's a very intentional, um, I, I've intentionally kind of kept this positive. So we're just gonna put that positive sign there just to be slightly more explicit. Okay, so now that I have this written out like this, I'm, I'm ready to go with this. So I wanna cancel these out. I, I can't quite cancel these out yet. Um, so what I have to do is I have to factor negative one out of the top so that I can reverse the order. So this is kind of a really standard algebra trick. So if I factor negative one out of the top, that negative x becomes positive x and that positive two becomes negative two. So I can reverse the order like this. And so now I've got this and now I can actually do my cancellation. So I can cancel these two things out and I get the limit as x approaches two from the right of negative one. So now I can take the limit and the limit of any constant is just the constant itself, so this will just equal negative one, so we're done. Okay, so now moving on to example B. So once again, I just wanna do like a really quick sketch of kind of what, oops, sorry, that's not the right sketch. Uh, I wanna do a really quick sketch as to what's going on with the absolute value of x minus five. So this is here at five, and so once again, you just know that kind of in the background, this is not the entire function, but the way that this function behaves is having a definite impact on how this function will act. Now, if you were to plug this function in, that would also be super, super illuminating kind of as to how it works. And I highly recommend that you do take the time to plug in some of these functions. It just gets you more of an intuitive sense of how to deal with the limits. The more functions you look at and kind of know what their graphs look like, it just makes everything a lot easier to figure out. Okay, so in this case, I'm approaching five from the left. So this is the negatively sloped side of this function. So that will allow me to basically rewrite this whole problem now as negative x minus five over x minus five. So I put this negative here because I know, I know I'm on the left side, so I can just go ahead and drop the absolute value and be more intentional about which part of the graph I'm on. So it's gonna look like this. And now I can cancel out those x minus fives. So ultimately I get the limit as x approaches. I, I don't even really need that negative sign there anymore because once I once I kind of wrote this out, um, I, I kind of don't need to, to note which side I'm on. I kind of explicitly wrote it out up here. So I'm gonna drop the negative from here. So what I'm left with is really this, um, oops, this x minus four times negative one. And so now notice I don't have like a zero over zero anymore. I can just plug in five. So this becomes five minus four times negative one. So this whole thing will ultimately equal um, negative one again, totally by chance. 
Okay, so moving on to C now. So it's still the same game that we're playing here, okay? So I'm still thinking about, I've, I've got this absolute value of x minus two. So once again, you still, you're still kind of keeping in the back of your, your head that there's this positive and this negative side. So in this case, if I'm approaching two from the right, how would I rewrite this, this function with the absolute value? Well, I could just rewrite it now by dropping the absolute value. And once again, you actually don't even need to put the plus sign here anymore because you're being really explicit about what function you're on. So you're like very willfully indicating in the problem that now we are on the, the right side because the right side would be this function x minus two here. So keep in mind, we've kind of in the back of our head put this invisible plus sign right here just to indicate we're on the positive side of the function. And now I can go ahead and cancel out these x minus twos. So now I'm left with just this, the square root of three x, which in this case I can just plug in the two. So I will ultimately get the square root of six and that would be my final answer in this case. Okay, so moving on to this last one. So now I've still got an absolute value function and maybe I don't know what the absolute value of sine looks like, but I, I feel pretty comfortable at this point kind of with working with these functions. So am I gonna be, um, so, so when I rewrite this whole thing, so think about how would I rewrite this now to indicate that I'm on the left side of the absolute value? Well, so let's see if I write this out. So once again, I don't have to have the negative here anymore because I'm actually going to represent the left side of this function directly in the function. So this would be how this would look. So I am on the left side of this so that is the, the negatively sloped side. So I put a negative here and drop the absolute value. And now actually the sine functions cancel out. And so this just becomes um, just the absolute, uh, sorry, no absolute value. This just becomes the limit as x approaches zero of negative one. So this just equals negative one. And once again, we're done. So that's kind of it. Like absolute values I know look really, really tricky, but once you kind of understand how they play around with the graph, um, it, it's pretty straightforward, but of course, all math, I always say it's all either trivial or impossible, meaning if you if you know what you're doing, then it's not so bad. And if you don't know what you're doing, then it feels impossible. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.